In this tabletop review, I'm going to be discussing a muzzle device made by Primary Weapon Systems, or PWS. This is their flash suppressing compensator. Uh, goes also by the part number FSC556. This particular uh, flash suppressing compensator is the standard factory muzzle device of the FNA FNH SCAR 16S. It features a unique port design that yields some of the best muzzle control on the market without the teeth rattling overpressure of the competition. Of course, I'm, I'm reading the information from um, uh, PWS here, so I'm not being dramatic. Uh, it also does this with enough flash suppression to keep muzzle flash out of the, your line of sight and optics. Pre-drilled for permanent attachment to 14 and a half inch barrels, the muzzle brake also serves as a suppressor mount for the Gemtech Halo. The thread pitch is one and a half by 28, which is your standard 223556 uh, for the AR-15. The um, suppressor mount is A2 mount, the dimensions are 2.33 inches long by 0.865 inches wide, and the weight is 2.5 ounces. This is also another product on my website. Uh, link will be in the description. Uh, price on this currently is $81. This is the packaging um, that it comes in, uh, a retail um, cardboard box. Um, let's see. The part number on the box is 3FSC12A1. So the part number has changed a little bit. If you do any type of Google searches, um, you may not have a whole lot of luck with that particular part number, but uh, you can always use the part number which I previously mentioned, FSC556. Um, the instructions on the back of this talks about um, threading the device onto the barrel, uh, determining the amount of rotation needed to align the, the device correctly, taking into consideration that the difference between hand tight and wrench tight is approximately 20 to 30 degrees. Use the enclosed shim set and following the instructions on the shim set packaging, install the device accordingly. Uh, installation is correct when the device is wrench tight and the PWS symbol is centered on top when shooting the rifle. And installation requires a 5 8 inch wrench or your standard muzzle type uh, uh, wrench. The box is nice for POP packaging. Um, inside of the box you have the muzzle device which I will take out in a minute because it looks like Looks like it's oily, so I'm going to take this off, out, off camera, and clean it up before I uh, put it on the table here. Um, now I've had um, several customers inquire about whether or not this device needs a crush washer. Um, this does ship with this alignment shim kit here. So the shim one, there is one item. Shim two there is let's see one each eight each one each um looks um trying to see if there's actually eight in here um it does look like there is more than one two three four so there may be eight right there and the shim three there's one of those so depending upon how much um, the logo is off center, uh, you will use these shims um, to help you get the muzzle device centered on your barrel with the proper torque. Now normally 20 foot pounds of torque is uh, adequate for this type of, uh, of muzzle device. I know some people will, will, will go uh, 30 foot pounds of torque on some muzzle devices um, and that could very well 
be dependent upon the type of mobile device you're using. Primary weapon systems did not list any type of torque settings that I could find for this particular device. Uh, so on the back of this, um, the shim set is comprised of three different size shims, one large, eight medium, one small. The large shim can be used to give the installer one half of a rotation or as a spacer for barrels that do not have relief cuts behind the threads. Shim two is used in varying quantities to achieve the proper alignment of your muzzle device. This shim gives the installer approximately 45 degrees of rotation. If needed, shim 3 can be used where smaller degrees of rotation are needed for proper alignment. In the past when I've installed this type of muzzle device, I've put it on the muzzle and I've torqued it down and then determined how far the logo is off from center. And normally if I recall correctly, it's, it's been a while since I've installed one of these. Uh, I've used either one or two shims. Um, I believe I used one shim two, and I might have used um, a couple of shim threes on another, if I remember correctly. Uh, so it's going to be up to your uh, particular installation, uh, how much torque you apply to it, and the type of barrel that you're using. Um, so let me go ahead and uh, take this uh, out of the package and clean it up and then we'll take a look at it. Okay. Um, this is the logo. Um, obviously that's the logo. On the bottom here, um, it is drilled through for uh, permanent attachment uh, in situations where you're running a 14 and a half inch barrel. You can install this, get it shimmed correctly, uh, aligned and then uh, you can drill through this hole into the barrel uh, use this uh, to get a pilot hole going then you can remove this and finish drilling into your barrel um, this does not include a stainless steel pin so you would have to come up with something on your own um, stainless steel nails uh, could be used you could cut one of those down one that will fit inside the hole there once you get everything drilled um, you uh, Tighten this down, get it torqued down, um, drop your uh, pin through here, and then you would have to weld over the top of this. Uh, this would make for a permanent uh, installation on a 14 and a half inch barrel. I like the fact this can be used for that purpose. I like the fact that it comes pre-drilled. A lot of these do not come drilled, and uh, unfortunately, I hate to say it, these are a real pain to drill uh, and they may not always turn out real pretty if you're trying to drill them. Uh, in an ideal scenario, you would clamp this onto a drill press and you would drill drill a hole, uh, but not everyone has a drill press in their garage. So it's really good that these come pre-drilled. Uh, it would be nice if it came with a pin, uh, but it does not. It is also flanged um, right here. So these washers um, actually will drop into this flanged hole. So once once you put the washer on and torque this down, you won't actually see the washer. On some muzzle devices that don't have this uh, flange on them and you use a crush washer or a peel washer or one of these types of washers, um, they end up showing through and you've got to go in and, and uh, with a Sharpie and paint them black. So this is real nice. The fit and finish on this device is excellent. Um, this uh, is not classified as a flash suppressor. It's classified as a uh, suppressing compensator or a flash suppressing compensator. Its primary purpose is compensation uh, to cut down on uh, muzzle rise and it does that very well. Now, it also does a fairly good job of cutting down on your flash signature. Now, it's not the best at flash reduction. There are other devices on the market, other muzzle devices, that do a much better job of flash suppression. But those types of devices don't provide any type of compensation. So there's always a trade-off. The best compensators 
offer the least amount of flash compression suppression the best flash suppressors offer virtually no uh, muzzle rise compensation at all so this is somewhere in the middle um, these are real popular they've been tested you know this is not a new new item it's been on the market for for new, three four years something like that um, there's plenty of videos on YouTube where people shoot these at night and you can get an idea of what these look like uh, in uh, low light uh, situations there's also some very good videos on YouTube where people test these and compare these to say an A2 the stock A2 birdcage and uh, they do a good job of showing you what type of compensation uh, these uh, this particular muscle device will provide. I've used these on several rifle builds. I've pinned these and I have run these on 16 inch barrels. They are very good and they, well, let me rephrase that, they provide very good flash compensation and very good compensation. So you've got the best of both worlds in a device like this. These are the types of devices that I prefer uh, to use on 14 and a half to 16 inch barrels. Now, I personally, I don't recommend these for use on SBRs or pistols. The side concussion and, and the concussion coming out of the top on these is just a little bit much on seven to say 10 and a half inch barrels. Uh, that's been my experience. Um, on those types of short barrels, you're better off, in my opinion, with a linear compensator, uh, which basically pushes everything out the front, nothing out the sides or the top. And that's just because the barrels are so short and the, and the barrel is going to be very close to your face once you shoulder it. Um, that's just been my experience. Uh, when I do run... A 14 or a 16 inch barrel. I like this particular uh, device. I also like the BCM, uh, the Bravo Company. Uh, both of those I like very much. Uh, it's hard for me to pick a favorite out of the two. This one looks more aggressive on the end of your rifle uh, and um, I don't have much else to say about it. I just ran out of talking points. Again, that's the primary weapon systems FSC 556. Two thumbs up, fit and finish, uh, the ability to pin it, the flange, the ability to hide the uh, alignment washers, the fact that it comes with alignment washers, um, mitigating the need for a crush washer is excellent. The price point is very good for this particular device. It does a fairly good job of, of providing compensation and a fairly good job of providing flash suppression. It's not the best of either, but it some, meets somewhere in the middle ground for both. It's one of my preferred muzzle devices uh, when I'm doing a rifle build. And that's gonna end this particular video tabletop review.